بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome all viewers this is part two we will continue inshallah just want to give everyone a moment to come back I hope we can get the viewers back sorry I had to just take a break for you know 10 minutes 15 minutes um, but if you check the links in the description then you will be able to, inshallah, find where you can you can order these books. If you want a physical copy, there's a link to Elm Institute Academy where you can instantly get the PDF as well as as well as um, video lessons. Just want to make sure the the quality is okay. If everyone can hear me and see me, all right. The camera was flickering earlier. I want to make sure it's all right, inshallah. Thank you everyone for joining us. So alhamdulillah, we, we made it to lesson five. And um, let's try to get the, uh, the momentum back, inshallah. <clears throat> so how long would it take to complete the course? I mean, the book itself, it's only about 50 pages. They're very short lessons. It's all a matter of, like even today, if I spend... Let's see, we got all the way to lesson five. So within a couple of hours, we could get through the whole book. The question is, how long is it going to take you to really solidify all of the lessons in terms of what's being taught grammatically and memorizing the vocabulary? So it all depends on the student. And that's why we have very short lessons with exercises immediately afterwards, because when you are being tested, that's really how you can see whether or not you understood it, whether you can recall it, or whether you need to revisit the lesson. And also, as I'm on the spot asking you questions, you'll see how much there is. You know, like, even though in this lesson, in exercise five, we're focusing on the ism coming after a harf jar, but still, there's other things to keep in mind. You know, for example, the, the whether it's definite or indefinite. Um, the, the, the type of word it is. So, yes, I'm already working on volume three. So volume three, we start getting into morphology. And that's that's really cool. That's, that's a very, very cool, amazing thing about Arabic is when you start looking at the root letters and how you can form different words with those root letters by following certain patterns. And, you know, Arabic is so beautiful, mashallah. So I already have like five lessons for volume three. But basically what, the way that we do it is on Ilm Institute Academy, we, um, as I'm developing the lessons, I will post um, like the PDF for that lesson with a video explaining it. And we have a Telegram group where people can ask questions. And we have tutoring and Muhammad James is in that as well. And then once that's all finished, then we publish the final book. So that's how, that's how both of these books came together. It's like this started with just me teaching students at the Islamic school and Sunday school. And then once we finished getting through the entire alphabet, we published a book. Same thing happened with this. We just lesson by lesson, we published a book. And now we're doing that with volume three. I'm going to start posting lessons on Ilm Institute Academy. And then once it's finished, we'll publish the book, inshallah. So, okay, so let's go on to, let's see. All right, so sorry we had to take a break. It sort of split the momentum, but let's get it going again, inshallah. So, you know, we learned about... Let's just review for anyone who's just joining us real quick, just real quick. Okay. We learned in lesson one, the three, is it flickering in and out? Cause on my screen, it's showing it's flickering in and out. SubhanAllah. I'm not sure why that, why that is, but hopefully it's not, it's not an issue. But first we give an, an overview about studying Arabic. You learn letters, letters form words, words form sentences. And we're just taking it one step at a time. First, we learned the three different types of words. By the way, if you don't know how to read yet, there's Ilm Institute Arabic Volume 1. We teach you how to read. This is Volume 2. Once you know how to read, you go on to this. We learn the three types of words with examples that we memorize. Then we learn about the definite versus the indefinite. A book versus the book, for example. Then we learn sun and moon letters. We learn about that definite alif lam and whether or not we pronounce the lam according to whether it is followed by a moon letter or a sun letter. Then we have male versus female names. We said male names end with... Tenween, female names do not end with tenween. 
Then we got to the ism after a harf jar. And we learned that when an ism comes after a harf jar, that ism is going to take a kesra instead of the default dhamma. So let's get to, mashallah, now we're starting to actually form sentences. All right, write the correct haraka at the end of each ism and read the translation. Okay, so we're going to write the correct haraka at the end of each ism, and we want to read the translation. So, Fatima fi al matbakh. Excuse me. So, Fatima fi al matbakh. So, we want to write the correct haraka at the end of each ism. Okay, so what type of word is in red? Fi. What type of word is this? Is it a fi'l, an ism, or a harf? Is fi a fi'l, an ism, or a harf? A fi'l has a complete meaning and a relation to time. An ism has a complete meaning without a relation to time. A harf doesn't have a complete meaning on its own. It is a harf. Very good. Fi is a harf. Now, in this lesson, or in this exercise, we want to write the correct haraka at the end of each ism, so we're not going to touch the harf, right? So, Fatima fi al matbakh. Fatima is in the kitchen. All right, these are all vocabulary words that we learned before. Fatima, how is Fatima going to end? We said that the default is that and ism ends with dhamma. So Fatima is going to end with a dhamma. Is it going to take one or two dhammas? Is Fatima going to have tenween or not? Fatima. Fatima. Fatima is going to end with one dhamma. Very good. One dhamma and it's not going to take tenween. But why? Why is Fatima not going to take tenween? Why is Fatima going to end with one dhamma? Fatima is going to end with dhamma because that's the default. There's nothing making it take anything else, but why only one? Excellent. Allah Mubarak. Because it's a female name, right? This is what we learned in lesson, uh, was it lesson four? It's a female name, right? So it's going to be Fatima 2, Fi Al Matbakh. How is Al Matbakh going to end? Is it going to end with a Dhamma, a Fatha, or a Kesra? Is Al Matbakh going to end with a Dhamma, a Fatha, or a Kesra? Very good. It's going to end with a kesra. Why is it going to end with a kesra? It's going to end with a kesra because it came after a harf jar. Excellent. Excellent. Allahumma barak. Very good. Why is it going to take one kesra instead of two? So we have Fatima too, took Dhamma because that's the default. It took one Dhamma because it's a female name. We have Fi, which is a harf jar. Al Matbakh comes after a harf jar, so it's it's going to end with a Kesra. And it's going to end with one instead of two. Why? Why doesn't it take ten ween? Because of the Alif Lam. Very good. Meaning that it's what? It's definite. Allahumma barik. Very good. Very good. Barak Laufiq. Yes. Because it's definite. Here's another question. Is this letter here, is this meme? Is this a sun letter or a moon letter? We say, we say, Al-Matbakhi. Fatima tu fi Al-Matbakhi. Why? Why do we, um, or we, we pronounce the lamb, Right? We pronounce the lamb, meaning that meme is a moon letter. And you can easily tell because of the little moon, the, the sukun on the lamb. MashaAllah. So you see, you see how all these lessons, they combine. Right? Look at all the different lessons we learn. The first lesson, we learn the different types of speech. Some of these vocabulary words, I think maybe all of these vocabulary words are from the first lesson. 
where you learn the different types of speech. So you know that this is an ism. You know that this is a harf. You also learn about definite and indefinite. So that's how you know that al-matbakh is definite. You also learn about sun and moon letters. That's how you know that mim is a moon letter. You also learn about male-female names in the next lesson, right? That's how you know about Fatima and how, why it doesn't take tenween. And then in this lesson, you're learning why al-matbakh ends with a kasra because it comes after half jar. So Allah Mubarak, you see how Arabic, it just, it gets very eloquent, very quick when you study it, you know? So imagine you spend a year, imagine you go through a hundred lessons, how the language starts opening up to you. So may Allah make it easy for all of us. Um, I think that's sufficient, inshallah. And then translate the following. This is so that, again, you're, you're testing, you're doing vocabulary and grammar si simultaneously. So you also, you want to understand what's being said by memorizing the vocabulary words, but you also need to know proper grammar, how these words come together um, to form a proper sentence, why words end um, with certain harakat, so on and so forth. Lesson six, see, they're short lessons, right? But you can spend a lot of time on each lesson, depending on how deep you want to go, you know, making sure that you memorize everything. So lesson six, transitive verse, intransitive fi'l. So we already, we've, we've been focusing on the ism, the haraf. Now we want to talk about the fi'l, okay? The fi'l can be divided into two categories, transitive and intransitive, okay? Transitive, is when a fi'l, so when a fi'l is transitive, this means it requires both a subject and an object. Okay, the subject is the doer of the action, and an object is what the action is done to. All right, this is a transitive fi'l. Remember, a fi'l is a word that has a complete meaning and a relation to time. Okay, so we're talking about verbs, basically. Okay, so when a fi'l is transitive, it requires a doer of the action and an object of what the action is done to. So for example, if we say the student broke the pen, the student is the subject. The student is the doer of the action. The student is the one that's breaking something. What's being broken? What's the object? The pen. The pen is being broken. Okay, and broke is the transitive verb. The boy hit the dog. The boy is the doer of the action. Hit is the transitive verb and the dog is the object. So the boy is doing the action of hitting the dog and the dog is being hit. Okay? So here we have some examples. And again, you're going to want to memorize all the vocabulary words at the, at, uh, you know, in each lesson. You, you want to memorize all of them. So, fataha, He opened. He opened. Daraba. He hit. Akala, he ate, right? These are all transitive um, fi'ls. Why? Because think about it. Fataha, he opened, right? Somebody is going to do the act of opening and they're going to be opening something, right? Daraba, he hit. Somebody is going to be doing the act of hitting and somebody is going to be getting hit or something, right? <laughs> so this is transitive. So in this lesson, you just want to know the difference between transitive and intransitive. So transit or intransitive, rather, let's move on to that. That's a bit easier to understand because when a fi'l is intransitive, this means it only requires a subject. It only requires the doer of the action. It doesn't require something that the action is being done to. So for example, the man cried. The man is the subject cried is the intransitive verb right the man he's the one doing the action but it's not it's not being done to something else he's not making something or someone cry but rather the man is crying it's just the subject right the camel slept you have the subject and the intransitive verb the girl exited you have the girl of the subject exited the intransitive so you see the difference between transitive and intransitive and then i give you some examples so kharaja he exited Nama, he slept. Baka, he cried. Nazala, he descended. Jalasa, he sat. Right? These are intransitive, intransitive fi'ls. All right? They only require a subject. Now, let's see if we can answer the questions. Lesson six exercises. Fill in the blank with the correct answer. The two categories of fi'l we just learned in lesson six were what? What were the two categories? 
What are the two categories? Sorry, I'm back in the chat, so that means I got to block people. Got to block people, unfortunately. <clears throat> what I have is if you check the links in the description, we have Ilm Institute Academy where I have, I already have videos teaching all these lessons. You can have access to the PDF. Just check the link in the description. The answer is transitive and intransitive. Very good. Transitive and intransitive. When a fi'l is transitive, this means it requires both a blank and a blank. When a fi'l is, is transitive, it means it requires a, a doer of the action and what the action is done to, or how did we put it in the previous lesson? It requires a subject and an object, a subject and an object. Jazakum al khairan, everyone, for the, um, all the nice messages that you are writing as well. I appreciate it. Subject and an object. Subject. And very good. When a fail is intransitive, this means it only requires a doer of the action or what? It only, the intransitive only requires a intransitive only requires a subject. Very good only requires a subject. So that's the difference, right? In this lesson, we just want to learn the difference between transitive and intransitive. And then I gave you some examples to memorize. So let's see if we understand this concept. Like this is, we're using English, but we just want to make sure you understand the concept, okay? So write an I if the verb in the sentence is intransitive or a T if it's transitive. The student slept. The student slept. Is that transitive or intransitive? The student slept transitive or intransitive so slept would be the the verb right the student slept is it transitive or intransitive it would be intransitive intransitive why would it be intransitive? Because it only has a subject, right? There's no object. The student slept. That's it. The student slept. What about the next example? The boy ate the bread. Is this, is this verb ate, is that transitive or intransitive? According to what we just learned in the lesson. The boy ate the bread. Is this transitive or intransitive? This would be... Transitive. Very good. It would be transitive because it has both a subject and an object, right? It has a doer of the action and something the action is done to. The boy is the subject. He did the act of eating. And the bread is what the object is the object. It's what the action was done to, right? So we have a subject and an object. And then we want you to translate. So this is going to, you know, um, you would have to memorize the vocabulary in order to answer these. So we'll skip that, inshallah. All right. And again, we're going to keep building and building. We're flying through it today because I just want to show you guys, I want to introduce you to this. But, you know, if this is new to you, it's not something you can just fly through. You're going to have to memorize. You're going to have to take your time. You're going to have to go at a steady pace. A steady pace. Okay. So, lesson seven you have the action, fa'il, the doer of the action, fa'il, or the, and the object, the maf'ul bi. So, in previous lessons, we learned situations where the ism ends with dhamma and kesra. In this lesson, we will learn a situation where the ism ends with fetha. All right, so let's review real quick. Let's test some of you to see how much you've solidified the past lessons. So we said in, the previous, in previous lessons, we learned situations where the ism ends with dhamma or kasra. So when does it end with dhamma? What did we say? When did we say that the ism ends with dhamma? When does the ism end with dhamma? We said that the ism ends with dhamma by by 
It's okay. This is how this is how it's gonna stick in your mind when you when you're asked the question and you have to think about it. Charlie, you're gonna remember from now on. And ism ends with dhamma by by default. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So the ism ends with dhamma by default. Okay. Now, whether or not it ends with tenween, that has to do with whether or not it's uh, definite or indefinite. That has to do with whether or not it's a male or female name. However, by default, it's going to end with dhamma. We, we, we learned that an ism will end with a kesra when? An ism will end with a kesra when? And don't feel bad because we're breezing through this. You know, we're breezing through it. An ism ends with kesra, according to what we learned, and I believe it was lesson five, when it comes after a harf jar. Excellent. Allahumma barik. Yes. So when an ism, okay. There we go. When it comes after a harf jar. When it comes after a harf jar. Very good. All right. Now, so, we, so we've learned a situation where an ism ends with a dhamma. We learned a situation where an ism ends with a kesra. There's a third harakah that we didn't learn uh, when a, an ism ends with it yet, and that is the fetha. That's what we're going to learn in this lesson. Okay, In this lesson, we will learn a situation where the ism ends with fetha. And that lesson is the object of a transitive verb, a transitive fi'l, will end with fetha. Okay, so remember, that, again, we're building on, on lesson by lesson. We're building slowly. The object of a transitive verb will end with fetha. For example... Kesara al-talibu al-qalama. The student broke the pen. The student broke the pen. So if we look at this sentence, this is the first time we're looking at it in Arabic, but in the previous lesson, we learned about how it looks like in English, okay? Because we want to take it a step at a time. The student is the subject. He's the doer. Broke, kesara, is the transitive verb. And this is why it's important for you to memorize all of the vocabulary as you go lesson by lesson. Broke is the transitive verb. And the pen is the object. Okay, the pen is what is being broken. So kesara, al-talibu, al-qalama. Why is al-qalama, why is it ending with a fetha? Because it's the object of the transitive verb. The transitive fi'l. Okay? Kesara at-talibu al-qalama. Okay? Kesara is the fi'l. It's a past tense masculine fi'l. He broke. It's broke that's used for the masculine singular. Kesara. Okay? So that's the that's the transitive fi'l. At-talibu. He is the one that did the action of breaking in the past tense. He bro It's the student that broke. Broke what? Al-qalama. He broke the pen. Okay? Now, this takes some getting used to because, look, the, the verb, the fi'l, it comes in the beginning. Right? In English, it's a different order. In English, we don't have harakat. Right? You don't have harakat. You don't have a dhamma over student. Right? In English, the subject just comes first. It's just in, in a certain order. Right? Arabic isn't limited to this. Arabic is not as limited as English. That's why you need to understand how these harakat play a role. Okay, so the student is the subject. Broke is the verb. Whereas in Arabic, we have the verb coming first and then we have the subject coming after. So kesara at-talibu al-qalama, the student broke the pen. Okay, and this is also why you want to you want to learn to think in Arabic eventually. You don't want to have to translate it because then you have to rearrange and everything. You want to you want to get used to you know, one step at a time thinking in Arabic, okay? So all we're learning, this is a very simple lesson, inshallah. I mean, again, if you solidify all the past lessons and you take it like a day at a time, a week at a time, then, you know, this, this isn't going to be as overwhelming if this is overwhelming for any of you. But we're breezing through it, okay? So all that we're learning is that the sub, the object of a transitive fi'l is going to take a fetha, okay? And here we have examples. Akala Muhammadun al khubza Muhammad ate the bread. Okay, so the bread, al-khubza, and this is why you need to memorize the vocabulary, al-khubza, it ends with a fetha, 
Why? Because it's the object of the transitive fi'l. You understand? Akala Muhammadun al Khubza. Muhammad ate the bread. Fataha Yasirun al Baba. Yasir opened the door. So the door, al Baba, is going to end with a fatha. Why? Because it's the object. It's what the action is being done to. You're opening the door is what's being opened. So it ends with a fatha. Okay. And then this is an important thing to also learn. Notice how an ism ending with tenween fatha ends with a silent alif. This is important to know. Okay. So for example, daraba al waladu hajaran, the boy hit a stone. Right here, Hajar. Hajar is indefinite. It doesn't have that definite Alif Lam. Okay, so we're here, we're saying the boy hit a stone. So because it's indefinite, it has to end with Tanween. Because it's the object of a transitive fil, it has to end with Fatha, Tanween Fatha. And here you're learning that when an Ism ends with Tanween Fatha, that Alif right there, that aleph right there, it's going to be silent. It's going to be written, but it's going to be silent. So that's just something you need to know. Otherwise, you'd be like, how am I supposed to pronounce this? How am I supposed to read this? Okay? That's just a rule in, in Arabic. And then after, you know, you solidify this. And again, you want to memorize the vocabulary. You want to make sure that you can answer all the questions. Take it a step at a time. They're short lessons. They're easy lessons. But you, unless you're memorizing it, you're going to forget it as you move on because it builds and builds and builds. So we have lesson seven exercises. Write the correct haraka at the end of each ism. Okay. So akala Muhammad as samik. Akala Muhammad as samik. So Muhammad ate the fish. Muhammad ate the fish. So we're starting with akala. This is a transitive fi'l. Akala, right? So in this exercise, we want to write the haraka at the end of each ism. Akala is a fi'l, so we're not going to write anything on that. Akala. Muhammad. So Muhammad, he is the subject. He's the one eating the fish. Okay? A semek, the fish is what? It's the object. It's what the action is being done to. So let's think, how... Are these isms going to end? That's what we need to do. We need to write the correct haraka. And this is, again, this is where past lessons are going to come in handy because that's how you're going to know how Muhammad ends. So, akala Muhammad. How does Muhammad end? Does it take a dhamma, a kasra, or a fatha? Does it take a dhamma, a kasra, or a fatha, Muhammad? MashaAllah, some of you guys are ahead. You're, you're ahead. MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. Muhammad is going to take Dhamma because that's the default. There's nothing making Muhammad take something else. And is it going to take Tanween or not? It's going to take Tanween. It's going to take two Dhammas, but why? Why is it going to take two Dhammas? Why is it going to take two dhammas? Akala Muhammadun. It's going to take dhamma because that's the default. There's nothing making it take something else, but it's going to take tenween because it's a male name. Very good. Very good. Jazak Makhir. It's going to take two. And it's okay if this is, if we're moving too fast, that's fine. But this is like, I think maybe lesson four, we learned that, right? Muhammad, it's a male name, so it takes tenween. Okay. All right, so akala muhammadun asamik. How is asamik going to end? What are we going to write at the end of asamik? Remember, we said what? It's going to end with fatha. Very good. Why is it going to end with fatha? And, and is it going to take tenween? Is asamik going to take tenween? Is it going to take two fathas? It's going to take fatha. Very good. So masculine is when we're referring to men or male. Feminine is when we're referring to female, girl. And, and there's other lessons further on where we get into that subject specifically. Um, 
it's not going to take tenween. Why? Why doesn't a semic take tenween? Why does it not take tenween? Akala Muhammadun as semaka. Why why does it not take tenween? Because it's definite. Very good. It's definite. You know it's definite because of that alif lam. Is the scene after the definite alif lam? Is that a sun letter or a moon letter? Is this scene here? Is that a sun letter or a moon letter? A semic is definite. It's the fish, right? It's the fish. It's definite. Scene is a sun letter. You can tell it's a sun letter because of the shedda. If it, was, if it was a moon letter, you'd see a sukun on the lamb. So you don't pronounce that lamb. You don't say el semic. You say as semic. And why does it take? Okay, so again, we're built where all these different things are going on, right? Akala Muhammadun as Why does it take a fatha? It takes one fatha instead of two because it's definite. But why is it taking the fatha to begin with? Why is it taking a fatha? Taking a fatha? Allahumma barak. May Allah bless all of you. You're such good students, mashallah. It's taking a fatha because it's the object of the transitive verb. Akala, right? It's the object. The fish is what's being eaten. And that's why it's going to take the fatha. Very good. Object. Excellent. Very good. And then there's just more examples of this. Okay? Just more examples of that. Oh, now we have the unit one test. The unit one test. Are you all ready for the unit one test? This is all the lessons. Lessons one through seven. Let's see how we do. Fill in the blank with the correct answer. Now, this is an entire unit. I mean, you could spend a week, right? So we're, we're breezing through it. There's different levels. Some of you, mashallah, are more advanced than others. May Allah make it easy for all of you to, to learn, to teach, to benefit. May Allah accept from us. But we're breezing through it. So unit one, test, fill in the blank with the correct answer. Now we have the word bank here. So you're going to take these words and you're going to fill in the blanks. By default, an ism will end with what? You're quick, mashallah. Dhamma, yes. By default, an ism is going to end with dhamma. Okay, let me zoom in for you. Let me see. Okay. Okay, by default, an ism will end with dhamma. Number two, the blank has both a complete meaning and a relation to time. Past, present, or future tense. The blank has both a complete meaning and a relation to time. The fi'l. The fi'l. Wayakum, thank you all for being here to learn. May Allah accept from all, all of us. I benefit probably more than all of you, mashallah, by, by your participation. Jazakum khair. The fi'l has both a complete meaning and a relation to time. Okay. When an ism is followed by a harf jar, it will end with what? What is an ism going to end with when it's followed by a harf jar? You know, it's a shame. It's a shame, like, because people are benefiting, you know, uh, learning Arabic, trying to get closer to Allah, and you're coming and just getting bad deeds, you know. But you're getting blocked. So anyways, um, you know, you can still you can still benefit, inshallah, if you pay attention, but you're not, you're not going to post anymore. So when an ism is followed by a harf jar, it will end with kesra. Very good, mashallah, and with kasra. Yeah, so these, these, this live recording, inshallah, it's going to be saved. It should be on my page. And also, all of these lessons, 
I already have pre-recorded lessons with a PDF at Ilm Institute Academy. If anyone wants to go, just the links are in the description, inshallah. All right, where are we at? <clears throat> you know, one of the problems is that people aren't taught correctly. When I was, one of the reasons why I developed these programs was because I myself struggled with not having good programs to learn. And also as a teacher, I saw the curriculums that were being taught in certain schools. And I was like, this is like not benefiting the students. Like this is like way over their head. It's overly complicated. So inshallah, if you go through these lessons, you'll learn inshallah, really. I, I mean, I'm, I'm breaking it down so simply that if you just go through it, inshallah, you're, you're going to learn it and benefit. I've seen it. You know, alhamdulillah, may Allah put barakah in it and may Allah make it easy for all of us. Um, where was I? The blank has only a complete meaning and no relation to time. The blank has only a complete meaning and no relation to time. The ism, excellent. Allahumma barak. Jazakallah khair. The ism. The ism has only a complete meaning and no relation to time. So the fi'l has a complete meaning and the relation to time, past, present, future tense. Ism, complete meaning, no relation to time. When an ism ends with two of the same harakas, this is called blank. What's it called when an ism ends with two of the same harakas? If it ends with two dhammas or two fathas or two kesras, what's that called? Tenween. It's called tenween. Very good. Tenween. When an ism is the object of a transitive fi'l, it will end with blank. When an ism is the object of a transitive fi'l, it will end with... When an ism is the object of a transitive fi'l, it will end with a dhamma kasra or a fatha. Very good. It will end with a fatha. And these are all... This unit test, these are all questions that were already asked. These were lessons already taught, lesson one through seven. This is just a matter of bringing them all at once, seeing if you can recall them. So whatever you can't remember, whatever you get wrong, you just know, okay, I need to go review that lesson. Simple as that. And you can just keep doing that until you go through the unit test and you get everything correct. The blank has an incomplete meaning by itself. So which has an incomplete meaning by itself? The fi'l, the ism, or the harf. It's the harf, very good. The harf has an incomplete meaning by itself. Yes, and we learned the harf jar. So there's different types of harfs. We learned the meaning of a general harf, but then there's the specific harf jar, which means if an ism comes after it, it's going to take kasra harf. All right, fill in the blank. True or false? Tenween indicates that an ism is definite. All right, now you got you to think on your toes, right? Tenween. Tenween indicates that an ism is definite. Is that true or is that false? Tenween, that's when it ends with two of the same harakah. False. Very good. This is false. Tenween indicates that an ism is indefinite. Question number two. A female name does not take tenween. Is this true or false? A female name does not take tenween. Is this true or false? True or false. A female name does not take tenween. This is true. This is true. A female name, we learn, does not take tenween, right? We learn that a male name does take tenween, Muhammadun, and we learn that a female name does not take tenween, Fatima too. Very good, true. All right. A sukun on the lamb indicates that the letter after it is a moon letter, while a shadda on the letter after the lamb indicates a sun letter. Is this true or false? A sukun on the lamb 
on the lamb indicates that the letter after it is a moon letter like El Kitabu, where we, we do pronounce the lamb. While a Shedda on the letter after the lamb indicates a sun letter like a Rasul, a Rasulu. This is true. This is true. Very good. And here we have a transitive fi'l requires both a subject and an object. Is that true? A transitive fi'l requires both a subject and an object. Remember we said there's an, a transitive fi'l and an intransitive fi'l. And it's important to know this because the object of a transitive fi'l is going to take a fatha, right? This is true. This is true. A transitive fi'l requires both a subject, somebody doing the action, and then the object is going to take that fatha. That's what we learned. All right. <clears throat> and here we're just doing more lessons. So this is this is rather than keep going over this, um, I want to I want to breeze through a little bit. So here here this is the less or this is the unit one test where we go over everything to make sure that everything in unit one you solidified. We're asking you about the different, um, all the different things that you that you're expected to learn, whether it be translating vocabulary words, whether it be adding a haraka at the end, whether it be true or false. Um, let's get to unit two, inshallah. I just want to get through as much of this as possible. Obviously, if you really want to solidify everything to memorize it then you're going to have to spend more time. But we're just going to breeze through it, see if you understand. And then memorizing, that's going to be something that people have to do on their own to, to a large extent. Okay, lesson eight. So this is the beginning of unit two. <clears throat> lesson eight, changeable ism. Changeable ism or mu'rab. We learned in previous lessons that an ism may end with dhamma, fatha, or kasra depending on its role in a sentence. In this lesson, we will learn what state an ism is said to be in, in relation to those endings. Okay, so when you first read the instructions, don't worry because the examples are going to clarify everything. Okay, so for example, we learned that an ism by default is going to end with dhamma. Right, so here's an example of that. Kharaja at-talibu. The student exited, right? Exited, this is the fi'l. And we're saying the student exited. Here, the student ends with dhamma because that's the default. Now, there's a name for this. Rather than saying, oh, it's ending with the dhamma or it's ending, you know, you can just say that it, that it is in a state of marfur. It's in a state of marfur. Okay. This is actually, I think we start learning about this, I think in, in Medina book three is when you first start learning about this. Okay, but we're learning about this in lesson eight, okay? So a state of marfur is what we call an ism that ends with dhamma, okay? And this is these are general principles, okay? So if you're more advanced, we're not, we're not getting into all the exceptions in this. We're just talking about the basics. We're taking it a step at a time. So kharaja at talibu because it ends with a dhamma, we say this is in a state of marfur. Then we have the state of mensub when it's ending with a fatha. Okay, daraba al waladu at taliba. Now we're using the same word here, at talibu and at taliba, to show you that an ism it can change the ending to indicate its role in a sentence. And when it changes that ending, we can label it to be in a specific state. So when it's in a state where it's ending with dhamma, we say that's marfur. When it's in a state ending with fatha, we say that that is mansub. Why is this mansub? Why is this ending with a fatha? Because it's the object of a transitive fi'l, right? The boy hit the student. The student is the object. Okay, but the, so we already learned that in a previous lesson. However, the point is, is that we can say that when it ends with a fatha like this, we say that it is in a state of mansub. And then we have a state of majroor. Okay, so think harf jar. Right, jar, majroor. State of majroor is when it's ending with a kasra. The habtu ila at-talibi. Okay, I went to the student. Okay, so here at-talib, it's ending with a kasra because it comes after a harf jar. 
Because it's coming after a harf jar and ends with kesra, we can say that it's in a state of majroor. Okay, does this make sense? So here you see a talib. This is the example we used in, in each of the sentences, and we saw that it can end with a dhamma, it can end with a fatha, it can end with a kasra. This is a changeable and changeable ism. Why? Because the ending can change. And when it changes, if it's a dhamma, we say it's marfur. If it's a if it takes a fatha, we say it's mansub. If it takes a kasra, we say it's majroor. Notice how the student, a talib, it was able to end with dhamma. Fatha or Kasra, depending on its role in each sentence. You see, it's it's taking a different role in each one of these sentences. That's why it's changing. Here it's just by default, it's taking a dhamma, so it's marfur. And here, here it's the object of a transitive fi'l, so it's mansub. Here it's coming after a harf jar, so it's majrur. This shows that this particular ism, a talib, is changeable. It's mu'rab because the ending haraka changes to indicate its role in a sentence. Now, you can imagine, you can for, this foreshadows the fact that there are also isms that are not changeable. And that's what we're going to learn in the, in the next lesson. Okay? Well, let's skip this. Let's, I'm getting a little, bit, uh, a little bit fatigued here. But, um, so again, these are just going to, these are just, let me check the chat real quick. Walaikum salam rahmatullahi wa Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, yeah, so basically the exercises as you have seen in the past exercises, you, you're just going to review everything we just learned to see if you memorized it. And I think we'll, we'll end with this because I'm, I'm a bit, I'm getting a bit of a headache. I'm getting a bit tired. Um, and this is a lot to take all at once. But just to, just to sort of finish this, uh, this concept, we'll go to lesson nine. We'll talk about the unchangeable ism, mebni, okay? So before we learned about the changeable ism, how the ending will change and there's different states, here we're going to learn about the unchangeable ism. Okay, so it's not going to change, right? In the previous lesson, we learned that a category of ism called changeable will change its final haraka according to the role that it's playing in a sentence. In this lesson, we learn a certain category of ism called unchangeable, mebni, that means that it does not change the final haraka regardless of its role in a sentence. Okay? Here we give you some vocabulary examples. All right? Note, this word here is pronounced hadha. Okay? And this word here is pronounced hadhihi. Okay? So it, you pronounce it as if there is an alif coming after it. You wouldn't pronounce it hadha or hadhihi. You pronounce it hadha and hadhihi. Okay, hadha means this when referring to something masculine. Hadhihi means this when referring to something feminine. Hua means he or it. And hiya means she or it. These are examples of the unchangeable ism. So all of these fall under the category of ism. However, they're not going to change like the previous examples we learned. And also note, when an ism is mebni, when it's unchangeable, it is said to be in the place of marfu'r, mansub, or majroor. Whereas before, it wasn't in the place of, but rather it was said to be in the state of, okay? When it when it's changeable, we say that it's in the state of marfu'r, mansub, or majroor. When it's unchangeable, we say it's in the place of marfu'r, mansub, or majroor. And here we're going to use the same examples. When you have the book in front of you, you can reference both, and you'll see that I'm using the same words, the same vocabulary, which makes it much clearer, these concepts that we're learning. Okay, so, kharaja hadha, this exited. Okay, so hadha, it's not ending with a dhamma, right? Why? Because hadha, it's always written like this. You're not gonna, it's not gonna take a dhamma sometimes, it's not gonna take a fatha, kasa, it's not gonna change. Okay, it's always gonna be written like this, hadha. So, kharaja hadha, it's in. It's just going to be in the default state, um, but it's going to be in the place of marfur. Okay, this exited. So if you compare it, it's easier when you compare it to a talib, for example, right? So kharaja a talibu, it takes a dhamma. Kharaja a talibu. However, we say kharaja hada because hada you don't you don't change the last haraka. Okay, so this exited, and we would say it's in the place of marfur. Here daraba al waladu hada. 
Daraba al waladu hada. The the boy hit this. Okay, the boy hit this. Here, hada, it's an ism, and it's the object of a transitive fi'l, which we learned when an ism is the object of a transitive fi'l, it takes fetha. However, this is unchangeable. So we're not going to write it differently. I feel like maybe this is getting a bit confusing. <laughs> this is getting a bit more advanced. But uh, the point is, is that, you know, because you're going to read this, right? Daraba al-waladu al-taliba. You know that al-taliba ends with a fetha because it's the object of a transitive fil. But here you see daraba al-waladu hadha, right? Why isn't that being written differently? It's not being written differently because you never write hadha differently. It always shows up the same because it's unchangeable. It's mebni. But we would say that it is in the place of mensub, okay? Because if there's another, if there's a changeable ism that's put there, it is going to take the fetha and be mansub, if that makes any sense. This might be a bit uh, a bit deep, um, but so don't feel bad if this is confusing. But um, but then you know, just to finish this lesson, and then we have the habtu ila. We would say al-talibi with a kasra if this was a changeable ism, because this is an unchangeable ism, we're going to say the habtu ila hadha. You see, hadha, it's written the same every single time. Right? But if we replace hadha with al-talib, then al-talib is going to take a kasra and it's going to be majrur. However, hadha, it's always written the same. Therefore, it's just going to be written the same and we're going to say it's in the place of majrur. I hope that made sense, inshallah. Behaptu ila hada, right? So here, notice how this hada did not change according to its role in each sentence. This shows that the ism hada is unchangeable. It's mebni because the ending haraka does not change to indicate its role in a sentence. So you see, we learn foundational principles. And then as we go along, then you'll start learning exceptions and then you'll be, it'll get more complex. It'll get more It'll get more complicated. It's not that it's so complicated. It's just because we're skipping so fast through everything. It might be you're taking it all in at once. But this is the reality of Arabic. If you take it a step at a time, you solidify every single lesson, you memorize and you keep moving at that pace. Then by the time you get to this, it's going to make sense, inshallah. Okay, but here we're just learning an exception to the rule because we learn, like, for example, when an ism is the object of a transitive fil, it ends with a fatha. But sometimes you'll see, oh, you know, Hada, it's always written the same. It doesn't change. When it comes after a harf jar, um, you don't add a, a, a kesra to hada. That's because it's unchangeable. It's mebni. And then we have a lesson. You know, we have an exercise going over it. I think I'm going to, I think we'll end it here for today, inshallah. What do you guys think? I feel a bit, I feel like my throat's starting to hurt. I'm starting to get a headache a little bit. Uh, alhamdulillah. There's there's only 19 lessons though. So I mean we've already we've already gone through half of the book. But as you can see like it starts off real simple but then the more that you build and the more that you build you know you're building on a foundation. So imagine you got blocks, right? You keep building and building and building, you know. You want to make sure that those blocks underneath it are solid otherwise it's going to start getting complicated. Yeah, so here in lesson 10, I'll just skim through, you know, the end, <laughs> some of these lessons. So then in lesson 10, we start talking about masculine and feminine. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to end it. But we, we start talking about masculine and feminine. We have part one. We have masculine and feminine part two. Then we have adjectives. You know, how, how do you describe an ism in Arabic? You know, we just keep building and building, building our vocabulary, building our grammar. We talk about the possession and the possessor. You know, how do you say Muhammad's book? How do you say, you know, the student's pen? We got Mamnu'a min as which is, you know, it's more exceptions to certain rules that we'll learn. You have, uh, you know, other, other lessons, you know, then you start getting into sentences. And uh, at the at the end, you have all the vocabulary. So if you just want to skip to the end, if you have the book, you can just try to 
memorize all the vocabulary words. Here, you know, if you go here, if you go to courses.institute.com, then you can you can register and you can get access to the PDF and you can get access to all the videos where we go over this. You also can get access to the Telegram group where myself and uh, Mohammed James will be in there to answer any questions to help out. Uh, Jazakallah khair for the super sticker. Really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone being here. Alhamdulillah. Wa'ayakum. Thank you, everyone. I enjoyed it as well. Um, so, yeah, so just check the links in the description. Um, you know, you can, for if you need to learn how to read, we have volume one. If you already know how to read, we have volume two. And then we're currently working on volume three. So you can join Elm Institute Academy. The links are in the description. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate all of the kind words, all the support, all of the participation. You all were great students. I really appreciate it. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa